What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to talk about wheel and tire fitment and how I like to punish myself and buy tires twice. Uh, so today I'm going to look at my 69 bed here. I uh, originally bought some 305-35 uh, 020 hand cooks for the rear of the car. Uh, that was like what I set up. Um, I want to get the biggest tire possible back there. Um, now that it's back from the body shop from a crack repair that was done with the 15 inch wheels that were on it, um, I'm kind of re-evaluating uh, my choices. So what I did was I compressed the suspension and I noticed that the tire was going to hit the quarter panel. Um, so I'm kind of afraid that if I keep these on there and as much as I'm not gonna drive it as much, but if I do, I take it out, I get on a little bit, there's a pretty big chance that it's gonna smack the quarter panel and put another crack in it and back to the body shop and ruin my beautiful paint shop. So what I ended up doing, I ordered a 275, 35 tire for it. Um, and it's gonna be not necessarily stretched. It's just gonna be in a little bit. And then I'm gonna end up cambering the top of it a little bit. So full compression, it'll be tucked up in there nicely. Cause I am gonna lower the car more. Uh, I ended up raising the car up just a little bit in the rear to fit those tires in there. Um, so I really want to kind of just bring the whole stance down of it. So I'm going to swap those tires out now and we're going to just take a look. Maybe we'll compress it up there and see if we got it right on the money. So let's go ahead and take a look what we got and get going. All right. So for the front of the car, I did go with a 255. 30 ZR20 on here. Now, it does look a little stretched in there. Uh, I was really worried with the 10 inch rim in the front here with steering it and, you know, rubbing issues, especially on the inside of it because it's a relatively big wheel for inside of here. Uh, but now that I'm kind of looking at it, I am kind of happy with it because I am going to lower this car down probably another inch. So I do have the clearance. And these tires were a good choice. At first I wasn't really happy with them, but now I'm kind of glad I went this route. So now let's go ahead and take a look in the back and I'll show you what I mean. So first glance, it looks really good. I was happy with the choice originally. Now I rather sacrifice that giant tire, not to have to take this thing back to the body shop and smash that quarter panel out. So I think the tire setup is going to be pretty good but we'll get them on here and we'll take a look. But as you can see here, there is like a half inch lip underneath here. So, and you can kind of just tell how close that is. So that goes up, that's gonna just hit that. So I just wanna be safe than sorry. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing jacked up, take these off, get the tires exchanged, get the tire swapped out and go from there. Okay, here you go. So you can see the size here and the tread width itself is roughly 12 inches across here. And the 275-35 uh, 020s are 10.8. So it's not drastic, um, but if it's enough to save me from going to the body shop and uh, having clearance and I can come down lower, it's win-win. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these over, have the tire swapped out and we'll get the uh, 275s on here and check it out. All right, so I just got my new tires mounted on here. Shout out to my boy, Steve, always hooking it up, taking care of my uh, car obsession problems with my wheels and tires. So these are mounted and balanced on here. And you can see the sidewall, how it's not sticking out. And I was afraid it was gonna be too stretched over, but it actually fits in there really nicely. And we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison here. This is the 275 and then this, is the 305. So it's like an inch and maybe like three quarters wider or something like that. And it's definitely taller too. But this will eliminate a ton of problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this mounted on the car and then we're gonna just compress the suspension and check for clearance.
Okay, so I've removed the rear spring bolt and then I just compressed the suspension upwards with the jack and it's so much better than it was. It's almost right up in there. So I'm gonna, a couple of degrees of negative camber and that'll clear it because I still have about a half of an inch upwards to the bump stop. So just to give you a better idea. So it does fit in there relatively nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and camber this in just a little bit just to get that clearance and that should do it. All right, I camber the wheel in a couple degrees and that'll about do it there. As you can see it, that clears that. That's completely bottomed out there and it completely clears that. So any aggressive pothole or getting a little squirrely on the road, we're not gonna have to worry about cracking that up. So I'm gonna head tighten everything down, get it on the ground, and take a look. All right, so now I got it back on the ground and it actually fits pretty nice. It's not sticking out as far as the other one did. And it'll keep the car out of the body shop. And fits in there pretty good. Still pops out nicely. All right, so that'll do it for today's video. Uh, my ultimate uh, goal here is to get the car down maybe another inch or so. Uh, so making that extra space in the rear of the car and not having to worry about blowing the quarter panels out again or any kind of body issues like that. Uh, it's a big relief. So we're getting one step closer. So if you enjoyed the video, hit like, subscribe, and stay tuned for next week. Thanks again.